What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Survivor Now podcast. My name is Randy, and today we are joined by an amazing guest, the man with the pretty face, I think is what Joel said to him on the boat. We are joined by the 17th runner-up of Survivor UK, Richard McKell. Richard, how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm absolutely fantastic. How's yourself? Uh, I'm doing good. Honestly, I got the time difference wrong because obviously there's a short. I'm in the in in the states, so I thought it was 9:30. So I've kind of been chilling here for an hour, and I was just excited <laughs> to talk to you, man. I guess I was just over the moon excited. So uh, I I know we don't have that much time today, but there's some good stuff to talk about. Obviously, the return of Survivor UK. I want to get into that. Uh, but let's start off on a lighthearted note. We like to talk about more than just Survivor here. So how are you doing? What What's new in your life? Any any big, exciting news? Um, no, nothing big. Just me, my husband, and my three sausage dogs. Um, <laughs> just li- living life. Just moving through. Um, yeah, just getting ready for uh, Christmas. <laughs> oh man, right? Are you a, are you a fan of Christmas once Halloween and all that is over, or do you have to wait till December? Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. I have to wait till December. I'm not interested ah. in the Christmas ads and everything beforehand. Oh man, I'm ready to put the tree up. All right, I know everyone <laughs> came for for the Survivor UK coverage, but uh, all right. So obviously, I haven't played Survivor myself, but now that you've gone on this journey. Tell us that experience, what you felt when you were standing on, on the boat. You saw Joel across the way, right? He, he's literally asking you questions. You realize the survivor dream is about to begin, the survivor experience, however you may look at it. What was that feeling like getting this journey started? What I will say is you do not know what you're missing uh, when it comes to survivor. I mean, I thought I knew what I was letting myself in for. Um, and standing on that boat, I just thought to myself, how lucky I am. I maybe didn't think that like by the time I was going out, but I was just sitting thinking, wow, I'm really here. I can't believe it. Um, and yet yeah, just a surreal experience. Um, and it probably didn't hit me until I hit the water and I thought, I've got to swim. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, remind me, were you a Survivor fan before going on the show so had you watched the show before applying and everything yeah so like Ren, i'm not a super fan however i do i have watched survivor and both the us and australia and so yeah so like i had followed it so i knew what i was i was letting myself in for i thought i knew what i was letting myself in for um but actually it was just so much better so much better (laughs) That's that's kind of what I keep hearing. It's like it sucks. Like, and we're gonna get into that first night as well. <laughs> but at the same time, it's terrible. It's horrific. But then it's also a dream come true. So you can kind of look at both sides of the spectrum a little bit. Oh yeah, like never in my wildest dreams did I ever think that I'd be on Survivor, uh, and then just roll forward, and there I am, like standing on the boat, getting ready to jump in, swim an absolute mile. Uh, then get up on the beach, try and build a fire. Like it was just so surreal, so surreal. That's your sign to apply, everyone. If you, <laughs> if you didn't listen to Richard right there, that's your sign to apply. Um, so you get put on Calaton, and we've got a lot of stuff to say about the tribe Calaton. <laughs> Am I saying it right? Am I saying the tribe right? Uh, you're asking a Scottish guy, <laughs> so <laughs> Calaton. That's what I would say. We we, we I just rhymed it with Peloton, so. Calitor. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, I was like, yeah, it sounds yeah. very similar. Um, so you guys, we we see you take part in a very classic survivor reward challenge. You know, you've got all the supplies on the boat. Get off what you what you need to take back to camp. But there's a twist. You have the fire making challenge, which which we've seen before at the very end to burn through a rope to get more supplies, and whichever tribe does that first gets everything which is which is massive obviously you didn't know at the time you were going to be getting their supplies as well um but you guys had an early lead it looked like you were dominating running away i was gonna say what do you mean an early lead we were miles ahead (laughs) you yeah i was trying to be nice to lanita a little bit nah that camera does not do it justice we were miles ahead oh my gosh so what happened what happened because it looked like maybe the wind. Uh, do you know what? Like we can all blame the wind, but everybody had the wind. They had the wind. We had the wind. Uh, yeah, let's say it was the wind. 
Um, we <laughs> built it up. Um, it did burn th- like it did burn up towards the rope, but then the wind, like a strong wind gust of wind would come and it pushed the flames back down again. Um, then it would stop and it start to keep back up. Um, and that's pretty much what gave Lenena a chance to get up on onto the beach after bailing everything out of the um, out of the, the the raft so they could lift it onto the beach. Um, yeah, it was just I, I I don't know. Let's blame the wind. <laughs> blame the wind. I I love how Joel the entire time was sitting there and he was like, "These people are absolutely gassed on Calatun." I'm like. I'm sure everybody's gas. I don't think that has anything to do with it. Um, we saw uh, Lenina using a tarp. So it was a very exciting challenge. Unfortunately, you guys came on the losing side of it. And that was something that continued throughout not only your episode, but the next episode as well. So yeah. I'll, I'll get to it uh, with Calatan. What? Where do we think everything went wrong in terms of the challenges? Was it the fact that you guys lost that first challenge and they had all the supplies, so they had a head start in terms of energy and strength? What do we believe was kind of the catalyst for Calatin losing? Um, so in the first challenge, um, there was no reason for us to lose. Um, it was ours to win, um, and we just didn't get that fire burnt up as, as quick as possible to get it through the rope. Uh, whether that be for the wind or whether that be because of the fire we built. What I will tell you is when we were standing there, um, I remember a couple of times, a couple of my eyebrows, you know, getting singed um, because it was just so hot and you're already on a beach um, that is already too hot. Um, I remember I'd just come out of the ocean and actually my clothes were dry again by the time we had started building that fire. It was that hot. Um, so Really? Yeah. That's a whole different discussion. I didn't know it was that hot outside. Uh, well, I'm, bear in mind that I'm a Scottish man um, in the sun. <laughs> my, my my standard is to try and run under a tree or hide behind a rock. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, um, yeah. So by by the time we'd finished that challenge, I was already dry. There was no need for hanging any sort of clothes up or anything like that. Um, and I think did that impact us moving in? We'll all say no, um, because we're all like really really excited, so we're in adrenaline. But the reality is, is you're but you're then not eating. You're then having physical challenges to get a like a fire going to try and get um, a, a shelter built, foraging for like other food. That takes its toll, and I think that that definitely came with us into the second challenge. Also, how how rough was it that that first night too? Because we saw you guys. I think there was a a scene we saw in the first episode. You guys, it was night out, and you're like, we got to get something. We gotta. And there was some discussion going like this won't support us. Well, we got to get off the ground. So right, how so, was the first night? So like without giving too much away, that's down to editing. So the reality is, is we had something built up, um, but actually what had happened was it collapsed, uh. and I wish they'd actually shown that um, because actually my military background that's what brings me into it. Because the next day it was me that was helping call the shots to get a decent structure built in. And that conversation, the bit that you don't hear me saying when they're saying, we'll drag the wood and sleep on the beach, that's pretty much my bit where I'm just like, absolutely not. Get up off the ground, <laughs> get everything for the fire pile, the firewood pile, get it underneath, get us up off the ground. Um, and so I was able to show my strength there. Um, and I think for me, because I get to that stage where I can be quite direct, people know that I knew what I was talking about. Um, and it's the same when it comes to getting stuff ready for the fire and things like that as well. I knew what I was talking about. So I was already, for, in my opinion, starting to pay a wee target on my back. I mean, that's that's one of the things that a lot of fans don't think about is the hardships of getting your shelter built up and then it collapsing in the middle oh, of the night. Oh. Like, oh, that would be the worst feeling in the world. Like, I um, would scream. I mean, I've done, I've done a lot of challenging things. But I mean, when you've swam all day, like built fires, forage for everything, you're just wanting to lie down. <laughs> and then you find yourself falling through the sla- falling through the bamboo pipes um, and your whole thing falls down. Um, I mean, as well as it definitely tests that resilientness. How prepared were you for like surviving out in the elements? Like how difficult was that with the bugs, the elements itself, the heat, as you've stated, did you have any trouble the the days you were there? Nah. So once again, my military, but like my military background, I'm used to that sort of thing. So actually I didn't have any problems. There were absolutely people that did have problems um, and were complaining about the bugs. 
for me, that's free food. Um, so <laughs> that's protein, baby. That, yeah, that is literally protein. Um, so I, I didn't have any issues with that at all. Um, and in terms of injuries and things like that, nah, I, I was quite good. The only bit that probably I had to watch out for was the sun. And I mean, the sand got that hot that oh. you absolutely couldn't walk in it bare feet. Um, or else you'd end up. In fact, actually, that's something I did do. I did burn the bottom of my feet running oh, from. I can only imagine that on the beach. Oh, uh, yeah, running from oh. the. And, and, and literally, you're talking, it was less than 20 meters I ran, and I'd already burnt my feet. Oh, see, that. Uh, see, I'm like, Randy, you want to go on Survivor? Like, whoo, I don't know if I'm ready for that. All right, let's get to the immunity challenge because I know yep. this is a big talking point. I know you had <laughs> to have been prepared to talk about this. So, to be fair, you were holding two barrels of weight. It wasn't like you just let go of one barrel or lost grip of one barrel. Yep. Um, so you were helping Matthew out. I can't remember who dropped out, but once they dropped out, um, you were helping out Matthew, kind of switching back and forth. Walk us through what happened, because obviously we're, we'll get to your elimination a little bit later on. But the big thing was Richard might have just let go because he wouldn't have let go of both barrels. So, so what walk us through that situation? Was it you were losing grip, and at that point, you're like, I, I'm done, guys, I can't. So, um, basically, what happened is you'll have seen that Matthew passed it back to me, and as he passed it back to me, I've then I've gone forward. So, because it's interesting, because I'd literally only just passed it to him, and he was having to pass it back to me straight away, mm. and I was having to take it, so I was already fatigued from that. And as he passed it back, I got a bit of a jerk that pulled me a bit forward. Um, so as I'm pulling back down to get back in, I've just felt one slip to the, the tip and then trying to get a hold of that one, the other one's gone. And at that point there, there was no way I was going to get it. It was either I let go and fall down uh, and hit the deck or I get my hands up in the air to stop myself from falling back the way. Um, and so they just come out of my hand. And that, the reason my hands are up is to stop myself from going all the way back because I was holding 45 mm. kilos in the air. No, that makes a lot of sense. What was there um, discussion between when Matthew handed you back the barrel? Was there anything from you basically saying, I, I, I don't think I can do it, man? Or was it just, all right, well, we're going right into this? Um, so, yes, yeah, so I think you actually hear me um, saying, I don't think I could do that. Like, I don't think I could take it. And it's funny because um, in the tribe, they were like, oh, communicate. I mean, you literally <laughs> heard it on the telly. Um, I am not a quiet guy. <laughs> um, like it's interesting because I've had a lot of people say to me oh Richard you didn't really say much I mean I talk a lot um, no, sometimes not always great but I, I talk a lot and I mean you can clearly see me saying I, like I'm struggling I can't take it and like there could have been the opportunity to pass further down but by that point he was already handing back and I was already taken because I wanted to help my tribe win um, it, I'm trying to I don't want to play too much of the what if we did this and, you know, who's it's and what's it and all that. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes it's fun to do. Sometimes it's like, you can't change the past. I was trying to think during the time of watching the challenge go down, who was standing on the side of Matthew? I don't know if you remember. I was thinking he kept passing it to you. I'm like, there's other people that could maybe hold the weight for a couple minutes or something. And we don't just have to put all the weight on the big guys, you and, and Nate. So I'm like, why isn't there more passing like side to side rather than just pass back and forth? Is it tactical or was it not? I don't know. <laughs> See, that's the answer I was expecting. That's why I'm like, <laughs> you can't really play the what ifs and stuff. Um, all right. So let's get into back to the tribe side of things. Yeah. We didn't get to see much of your relationships that you had built with the tribe. So I'm interested to hear who do you believe was your closest ally or someone on the beach that you just really connected with right off the bat? Um, I'm quite a sociable person and that's a massive thing in Survivor and people don't realize that. I probably connected with quite a few people. Um, so Tanuki was one, um, Rachel would have been another and Jess who didn't vote for me. Thank you, Jess. <laughs> yes. you, 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 you knew the light, you knew my strengths. Um, I, I would say them, I, like, but like I say, I probably got on with um, probably all. The one person I probably didn't get as much a chance because it's a short space of time was probably Nathan. Um, mm. and, and that's where I feel that I don't think I would have been in anybody's lips to start off with. 
but I think that he would have known what my skills were because of what we were chatting about. And he probably would have started to see me starting to roll that ball, especially with the social game. And he thought, let's just say, he, he gave up. Um, mm. And, the, and the, the reality is, is everybody else's eyes is forward. So you've just got one word against another. Um, and both both myself and Nathan chatted about that as well whilst we were there. And I assured them that I did not. Mm. See, this is the insight. This is the insight we want. Um, we saw the vote maybe go in different directions. Obviously, your name was being thrown around because of what happened at the challenge. We saw Shay was kind of annoying some people. How confident were you heading into Tribal Council that, you, no, it's not going to be me tonight? Or were you super nervous that it oh, could have been no, you? No, no, no. So I knew by I knew by the time um, we were hitting Tribal Council that I was, I was the one that was going to go. So I, and I knew that, right? Because um, I'd already been told by a couple of them that my name had been banded about. However, what you didn't see was there was five of us around the water in the water hole, and we were chatting about Shay. And I thought we've absolutely got uh, Shay. Sorry, we were chatting about Shay, and I thought we've absolutely got it. Like we're, we've got him out. Then what happens? He happens to turn up, and Rachel just blows my plan out the water by saying, "Shay, you've annoyed a lot of people." Blah 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 blah. And then he's went. Oh, I'm sorry. I want to apologize. I'll do better moving forward. Blew my plan right out the water. Wait, Thank Rachel. You, Rachel, Rachel we, have to, <laughs> we have to take that. We have to take back. Or we we gave Jess the kiss. That's right. That's right. Uh, but yeah, so Rachel, what you're saying is Rachel, if she didn't say anything, there was some heat coming on that maybe let's vote Shay out instead of you. So we were talking about Shay, yeah. Um, and we were we were saying um Let's get shy. So we weren't even chatting about me to start off with at that point. This was earlier on because um, Nathan had only just started his conversations with Tanuki and, and, and the rest of them on the other side. But he just happened to turn up when we were all chatting. Um, and Rachel just turned around and said, well, look, you've annoyed a few people. Like, your name's in my, in my mouth. Um, and basically got an opportunity to apologise and, and, and do his work. And I think that that's, he then realised at that point there he had to get in with Nathan and before you knew it I already knew by that point um so walking at tribal council um did I know I was going yeah um, <laughs> that's, that's why there was no tears on the inside there was tears um but you know what well played Nathan well played well that was going to be as we kind of wrap up here that was going to be my next question is walk us through that feeling once you got your uh torch snuffed and then on a more positive side of things, what are you going to take away from this entire experience? Because this is something that changes a lot of people's life. This is a family that's always going to stick with you. So what are you taking away as a whole? Um, so for me, when the, the when it got snuffed out, um, on the inside, I just felt like a wee candle. Like I'd just been snuffed out of me as well. And I just thought for a wee second, what's going on here? But I'm quite a resilient person. And I quickly thought, oh my God, I've actually been on Survivor. Um, I'm part of a family and what I'm taking away from this is that I can continue to challenge myself I mean I'm 37 um, I'm, I'm, I'm moving forward in life to still do this it was a massive challenge and I really really enjoyed it um, I'm getting ready for my next challenge running a marathon um, wow, so good yeah for you. And, and do you know what another bit that I've taken out of it I've got my wee family of UK Survivor as well and the reaction from Everybody else has been absolutely phenomenal as well. Um, yeah, they, they'll turn around and say, I shouldn't have gone, I shouldn't have gone. What I will say to them is, you're right, I shouldn't have gone. However, it's the game of Survivor. Play the game, you play to win. Well, I don't want to say they're right, because the last question we always ask, it is tradition here on Survivor now. Survivor UK just started up. They, hopefully, they keep on going, keep on doing this. And we have returning players in the future. So, Richard, would you play again if you got the call to go back out there? It, or is this story, like, over? Damn right I would. <laughs> I've got a point to prove. I absolutely would go back and play. Yes. That is the answer we always love to hear. Well, Richard, I know you got a busy day ahead. I don't want to take up too much more of your time. But the pleasure has been all mine. You are a wonderful person, an amazing personality. Like I said, like Joel said, a beautiful face, sir. <laughs> uh, well, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to speak with me, Richard. Perfect. Thanks very much. Have a good day. You too.